scanning for audio. Welcome, welcome once again to, yes, you've guessed it, another Tin Dog Podcast. And yes, sadly, still being a car cast, it's time for a Tom Baker roundup. Everybody else has been fixating on Tom Baker, which is all nice and dandy, but the Tom Baker CDs and audio stories from Big Finish are not part of the main range, hence the reason I've been covering the Colin Bakers of late. Now, yes, Nerva Beacon, the very first story in Destination Nerva, remarkably good. Tom was back on form. But there's been several others since. Now, the last two stories, that The Aside and Adventure and The White Worm, I'll be reviewing both of those together at some point in the very near future because they are, of course, back-to-back stories. But what about the other three? Now, yes, I've talked at great length about Destination Nerva. But here we have the Renaissance Man, Wrath of the Ancini, and, of course, Energy of the Daleks. Three exceptionally strong stories. Tom's whole season's been very, very good. Again, all of the stories in this series are set chronologically, immediately after Talon's Owen Chiang, which is not a problem, because this is the education of Layla. So naturally, of course, where do you start when you want to educate someone? Well, of course, you take them to a museum. Coming soon from Big Finish Productions, The Fourth Doctor Adventures. The Doctor and Miss Leela. Hello there. Doctor, is it? I'm Reginald Harcourt, and this is the collection. What is this a collection of? It's a collection of everything. And what a remarkable gallery. Is that an Edward Johnson? Oh, so many paintings. Do you handle that revolver like an expert? I fired one at a dragon. Why are there spaces? That's because I haven't collected them yet. This place is wrong. We should leave. I do not like this noisy world. All these places... Reaching the TARDIS has to be our first priority. There they are! Leela, run! More flying machines! Measure test. Run! Over here! Leela! It seems the doctor's not cooperating. Nurse, prepare for surgery. How does it feel not being the cleverest man in the room? I wouldn't know. How does it feel? Doctor Who. The Renaissance Man. Now, Big Finish has a tradition. A long, long standing tradition of stories that take place in museums. They've not been particularly good. There's been museums of sound, museums of experience, and here's yet another museum. It's more of a living interactive museum with a runaway computer programme. Again, we're back to the whole Westworld feel. Now, it's got Ian McNeese in it playing someone other than Churchill, which is always going to go down well because the guy is a particularly talented actor and it would be awful for us just to think of him in, say, one role. The other characters and actors do a completely workmanlike job. They pull it off very well, but for me, it's the weakest of the whole series. This is the first time that the extremely short version that is this series, i.e. the one-disc format, has kind of not irritated me because I was kind of glad the story was going to be over at any moment. I was pleased it was going away. It's probably not the best way to approach these things. But like I said, the story just didn't do it for me. Everybody goes on and on about how marvellous Chimes of Midnight is and how bit sapphire and steely it is. And it is. But don't mine the same hole over and over again. Strange people who don't quite know who they are. Yeah, we get it. It's scary and spooky. But is it really what we're going for all the time yes it really didn't do anything for me which is sad because the acting was perfectly strong and 
storyline it was hardly lacking not as good by any stretch of the imagination as Wrath of the Iceni. Coming soon from Big Finish Productions The Fourth Doctor Adventures We are our stories We are our songs, our dances There are those who would say we tell our tales but they are wrong Our tales tell us Why are we here? Your continued education What's the point of a time machine if you don't use it? Hmm? Well, the gods preserve us, you cowards! Think you can simply run away? You serve Queen Boudicca now, as do I. From this day forth, you shall tell her fortune, or I shall put you to the torture myself. If I want you to learn about your ancestors, better to do it in person, not skulk about in museums. You should make peace with your false gods. You will be seeing them soon enough. Are you first, witch? When I'm gone, my children will sing of me. They will sing of Boudicca, of Leela, and of the Doctor. Let them begin. Doctor Who, the wrath of the Iceni. Boudicca or Boudicca is something that we're supposed to be taught at school, but we very rarely get round to being actually taught it. That's in England. In the rest of the world you get kind of, you what? Most of my knowledge of it comes from a Channel 4 documentary, docudrama, that had, um, let me see, oh yes, River Song in it. It's perfectly fine. Now unfortunately, if you do know the history, that kind of detracts slightly from what's going to go on. I don't want to spoil anything at all for anyone, but if you already know what's going on, then you already know what's going on. And there's nothing you can see or do to alter time. Not one jot. To quote the first Doctor, It's wonderful to compare and contrast Leela, the true warrior, with someone with, well, Roman motivations, and you really get the feel for the time. And of course that's ridiculous to say that because it's a drama. But, but it's true. It feels like a period drama that just happens to have the fourth Doctor and Leela in it. There is, of course, because Leela gets separated from the Doctor, a sort of emergency standby companion, who is not exactly a historical person, but definitely has historical grounding. Cities burn and people will die. It's dark, it's menacing, it's good. It's exactly what we've come to expect. And finally, before we reach the last two of the two-part stories, Energy of the Daleks. Energy of the Daleks. You are under arrest. Keep away from me. I have no quarrel with you. Do not resist arrest. The beginning of cultural collapse. And it's about to get worse, thanks to your friend Damien Stevens. Chronon particles detected! What are you up to, you Daleks? What is it that you hope to achieve? Answer the question! Answer! 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 You will not force me to speak! How many of you inside that thing, then? Just me and the Doctor. Doctor? Hello, yes, that's me. How are you feeling? Subscribers get more at bigfinish.com. You do get the feeling that Nick Briggs had issues with fuel bills. I know he became a father almost the same time as I did, so your priorities suddenly change to much more mundane matters, but you do get the feeling that this is at its core. Cheap fuel for everyone. And, of course, Nick's gone to what he knows best, which is the Daleks. It's nice that Leela, or at least Louise Jameson, finally gets to work with the little metal tin pots. Which is absolutely fitting. The descriptions are great. And, of course, it's got, well, let's face it, the guy out of Rose who owns the Blue Shed. In it as Strange Fat Northerner. Yes, he isn't going against type there. Energy of the Daleks is quite a strong story. It's got Robo-Men in it for a start, which gets my vote straight off. 
It's also got, well, let's face it, a fairly minimalist plot. And the Daleks are time travellers. So a tiny, tiny part of you starts thinking, do these Daleks look like they do these days? Now, obviously, it's Big Finish, and they're not allowed to discuss such things. They're not allowed to discuss such things at all. You know, even hint that things have got a different design. But let's face it, it's audio. You can always imagine whatever you want. As you'd expect, the Daleks are well performed. You don't expect anything else from Nick. Mind control, the sort of thing you've seen in Daleks Invasion of Earth. Again, very well executed. The two episode format does, finally again, make you wish for more episodes. And again, I can completely live with that. But at its core, is it nothing more than just another runaround? The Doctor trying to solve things, basically an excuse to meet the Daleks again. Perhaps it is, perhaps it isn't. It has to be the Daleks from the future, because of the events of Genesis of the Daleks affect the Time War, and so on. Davros isn't around, still, because of course he hasn't been dug up again in Destiny. It's a sort of stopgap Dalek story. There are, as always in such things, nice moments, nice ideas. Things like the National Gallery being used as the headquarters for a corporation. Tiny touches that make you feel slightly uneasy, if of course you are a culture buff. It's a nice building and it is located in the centre of London, so I can see that happening one day. Move the National Gallery somewhere else, somewhere where perhaps the entire nation can see it. Call me old-fashioned, but the Royal Armouries is now in Leeds. Only bits of it are at the Tower of London. I've rambled and I know I have. Look, it's a great story. There's nothing I can say about it that'll be detracting. There's nothing I can see about it that would show it up. You like Tom, you love Leela, go for it. You know you want to. The next reviews of The Fourth Doctor I'm going to try and do back to back because they're all basically one story. Although they are one story in the sense of, say, the sound of drums and utopia. Uh, They fit together but they aren't exactly in the same place. But they both have one major villain in the shape of Geoffrey Beavers. Right, I'm going to go now. I'm going to bid you all farewell and see, as always, be seeing you. You have been listening to the Tin Dog Podcast. Doctor Who and its associated shows are all trademark of the BBC. No infringement is intended. Contact us at tin dog at hotmail.co.uk